Hello and welcome back everyone. This video is going to be interesting because now we are going to learn about Firebase triggers. Now Firebase triggers can be of all types like Firebase authentication triggers or real-time database or cloud Firestore. And there's so many cool things we can do with this. But if you're new to this channel, welcome back. This is Pranav and we have been working on an Angular playlist also, we sometimes combine Angular and Firebase to build an, uh, an amazing full stack application. And we have done most of that online live in front of all. And in this video, what we'll be learning is what happens when let's say a new user signs up. For example, in this scenario, if a new user signs up, what if we want to send them an email that, hey, uh, welcome to our website. And this is, these are the features that you can uh, look into. Or maybe you want to send some notification or maybe you just want to listen to some other events and uh, based on those, you want to do something else. Now, why I'm saying this, if it's a full stack application, shouldn't this be very easy and straightforward to do so? Well, not so much because we are using Firebase as our backend. Now, Firebase, if you don't know, is a backend as a service, right? So essentially, you don't even need to know any server side programming language in order to do most of the things that we have done in this, in this project. But again, today we'll be using a Firebase cloud function. If you are from AWS or other uh, similar cloud backgrounds, you might have heard about serverless functions, serverless APIs, et cetera. In Firebase or Google Cloud, it's essentially known as a cloud function or Firebase function where you can essentially do anything. You can create a feature, call it with an API that does something in your web website in the background, optimize images, for example, send emails and so much more. But today, this video is broadly focused on triggering functions on user creation. For example, if a new user joins your website, maybe you want to send them an email. But today, for, for today, we'll just maybe do a log to understand the trigger because, again, sending an email might be a part of your application. It's not a part of the application we are working on in this project. And eventually, what if you want to save something in another database? Let's say user logged in at 10 a.m. You want to store that. Right? So we have to learn all of that. And I think it's going to be amazing. Now, again, if you're new to our channel, I would highly recommend you, first of all, go to this video and learn about what are Firebase functions, the very, very basics and how to start with them. So we have created, it's less than a 10 minute video and the real coding part, I would say is two to three minutes. So I would recommend you to learn Firebase functions first, create your first serverless cloud function and then move on, then you will graduate to what we are doing today in this video. If you are interested in the whole Angular course we have been working with, so this is a complete Angular 14 course. I would say 90% of this is live on YouTube so that you can see me struggle through my mistakes and then figuring out how to solve them in front of you guys. And also you can learn, go to this tutorial for complete Angular and Firebase to learn how to make a full stack application using Firebase as your backend. Now, enough said. Let's quickly go to my application first. If you're here for the first time, this is a sign up page, but we have a much cooler sign up page as well, which is the login screen. And in the login screen, you can sign up with Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and email. Again, if you're interested in this, all the links to these videos are linked in the description below. And today, what we'll do is whenever a new user signs up, for example, in our Firebase, we have an authentication tab, right? We have set up actual authentication and these are all the users signed up on our application. Now, a lot of them are test users, obviously, because our application is not, it's, it's live, but we haven't really marketed our application much. There are some of you amazing people who have been following our videos and created your accounts. Really nice to see you all, but we'll be learning how to respond, how to respond to someone who creates a new, a new account on our application. Right. So essentially what I want to do is whenever someone goes to this form, fills this up, I want to, let's say, first of all, just log it. I just want to say, hey, a new user logged in. Now, we won't be going through the basics of how to create Firebase functions and so on and so forth, because we have done that so many times on YouTube. So I don't want to repeat myself again and again. So I have already set up a basic Firebase function linked it to the project. And immediately now we are going to start coding, which is the fun part, right? So. This is a Firebase function and it's an empty project essentially, it just has a git ignore and package.json and node module. So basically nothing else. This is the only code that we are going to write today. And all of it is here right in front of you. Let's get started. First of all, if you have created Firebase functions before, you know this part. If not, I'll quickly go over it. 
This is name of the function that is going to execute whenever our conditions are met. Now this can be based on H, uh, an API, which is hit with an HTTP call, or it can be a trigger. Today we are focusing on trigger. We have covered HTTP API uh, functions so many times. I don't even want to go over it. So I'll say, let's say uh, new user trigger, right? And this, fun this function name can really be whatever you want. Now functions is a package that we have installed already. It, it comes pre-installed whenever we create a Firebase function project. And then we want to listen to auth changes because we are only interested in whenever a new user signs up. That's the goal for today. So auth.user. And then this has multiple functions like on create, on delete, before sign in, before create. So maybe when someone creates or deletes their account, you can send them an email using this trigger and say, we are sorry to see you go. If you want, sign up to our email list and we'll send you promotions or whatever new deals we have. Or you can just say, sorry to see you go. Hope we can do better, right? You can send those really nice emails to create a bond with your customers, with your clients, or just for fun if you're learning something like me. And then I can say on create. Now this is going to be an asynchronous function. I already know so. So I'm going to use async. This returns a user. So whenever you create a user, this is an on create function that returns as the user object. Really, really convenient, right? And then I can simply say, just for now, functions.logger.log. Let's just quickly log it and see if it works and then we'll build better features. We'll say a new user sign in for the first time. That's it, that's all we want to do, right? So let's first deploy it. So I can say Firebase deploy functions or Firebase deploy only functions. And this can take from 30 seconds to a couple of minutes, but once this is done, it turns out I just had a node version mismatch. So I just used node 18 again, just using NVM. And now we'll try to deploy it. I just deployed it as you can see, but I'll deploy it again in front of you just to be sure. And just to make, bring this home that how you deploy Firebase functions is clear to everyone. So let's just wait for this to complete, but let me just tell you what happens once this runs. So which is great. We can use some, we can save some time. So as soon as your function will be deployed in your project, you should have a function tab. And as soon as you go to the functions tab, it should show you all the functions you have linked with this project. Now for me, this is Angular crypto project because I'm creating an application where you can track your crypto. And this is just a fun project, which is again, live on YouTube. Let's wait for this to load. Now finally, our latest function that we just created with the correct name is also deployed. Let's quickly go ahead and check this one. Let's go to view logs, close this, go to my crypto application again, click on join create a dummy account. So I'll say abc at abc.com. So that's the name. So the name would be abc email. And let's sign up. Now, as soon as we sign up, let's go back here, run the query. And there you go. Finally, a new user signed in for the first time. I started thinking if I'm doing something wrong, but there you go. It just took some time to show in the logs, but now finally we have our functions up and up and running. Now, a log is simple and it's pretty useful, I would say. It's very nice to do. But what if I want to do something more? What if I want to save in another collection whenever a user signs up or whenever a user signs up for the first time or maybe just save an event of all the logs, whatever you want to do. So maybe I can just say admin dot uh, firestore. So now we are saving something in the firestore function. That's my goal. I can use a collection or maybe create a new one and I'll say signups. And obviously you can name this anything. Maybe you can name this email notification or anything you want, but I'll just keep it simple. And there goes my JSON object. So I can say uh, event user signed up. And maybe I can save the text. And in that I'll say, uh, maybe I can use name or email of the user. So that will always be there. So I can say 
user dot email signed in for the first time right this can be a good useful scenario for your case maybe you even want to save a timestamp so let's go ahead and do that so i can say timestamp and the timestamp of, of course it really depends on you but i'm going to use the basic firebase timestamp that uh, that is uh, you know pre-configured so i'll say admin dot firestore dot uh, field value so this goes to whatever we are just inserting right now and then server timestamp so this is a server timestamp which basically saves the time of event that we are doing right now and the event we are doing right now is adding something to the signups table right it's as simple as that and maybe the name collection name would be user events maybe this would be a better name now you can be the judge and you can decide for yourself now i really like this and in the end i'll just put a log that will say uh maybe new user and this can be user dot email is save to our db maybe this is good enough and i can just use back quotes to have better string interpolation and there you go as simple as that beautiful code right i i hope this runs in our first attempt so that we saves everyone time but as you can see the real code is like just six lines of code right and all we are doing is we are able to easily listen to whenever a new user creates an account on our application we are first of all doing a log right we are saying hey a new user is signed up for the first time then we are saving that information on our database so i'm saying admin.firestore.collection and this is a collection i created just created right now with the help of this function so this is how firestore works if a collection exists it will use that if it doesn't exist it will create a new one for you it won't give you an error that is beautiful then we have the event the text for the event so some more information about it and then finally the timestamp once we are done we are just saving like a final log just to tell the the logging function you know when we check the log just to say that this event is successfully processed now the great thing about this is this part is totally customizable right maybe you want to send an email to the user maybe you just want to save something else maybe you want to do some xyz task right you can totally do that but the good thing that you should take away from this video is how to listen to firebase events now in the same file i could essentially go here and create exports dot uh, delete user trigger and based on that i can send again an email sorry to see you go or something some other event that i would like to track for myself right and i can do that so easily with the help of firebase that's why i really like this uh, these uh, Firebase functions, also known as cloud functions, I really like them. They're lean. I don't have to set up with hundreds of lines before using them. Now it looks like it's deployed. So let's quickly refresh it. Till then, we also can maybe reopen the logs or just run the query on these logs. Looks like it is updated. And uh, let's go ahead and check it out. So I'll go back to my website. Let's remove this. I'll go to the join button again. Again, we'll use a dummy account. So I'll say bob, bob at email.com. Dummy simple passwords. Now we'll sign up. Fingers crossed, right? Let's see if this works or not. Okay, going back here. Sometimes as we just saw, it can take some time. So I shouldn't be disheartened if it doesn't run in the first attempt. But soon it should show us some updates. Let's see there you go a new user just signed up for the first time new user bob at gmail so even our user object that we got from this function works because that is the email i saved i said bob at gmail.com perfect now the final test let's go to our firebase database or firestore database and check if the event was actually logged and there you go user events database was created this is the document and this is the timestamp with the text bob at gmail.com signed in for the first time and the event is user signed up perfect we were able to do everything that we said we'll do in this video yes there were a few hiccups that and there are every time a few hiccups whenever i'm live or whenever everyone is coding in their real life but i'm really happy we were able to reach till the end successfully i really hope you learned something new 
Let us know in the comments down below. Ask us your questions and soon the code will be also linked in the description below. I'll actually make a pinned comment that will have the source code for this project that I just created in front of you. Thank you very much for sticking till the end and see you in the next video. Bye.